frequent guest of ours, and that's A.B. Stoddard, veteran political journalist who happens to be associate editor and columnist over at Real Clear Politics. Uh, A.B., they're, uh, they're on the seas, so they're talking about Connecticut. It's a done deal. It's done and dusted. The Senate loves faux solemnity, so they're all standing as if something else may happen. I got news for you. 14 days from now, Joe Biden's going to be inaugurated, the 46th president of the United States. So we may show that going on. We've established that as our common set of facts. A.B., where does today leave the Republican Party, and I'm sorry to hit you with a, a basically so broad as to be unanswerable question right off the top. <laughs> Brian, it's so interesting when you were talking earlier to other guests and specifically to Phil about what will happen when the sun um, rises tomorrow. Uh, when the sun rose this morning, Republicans were nursing literal and metaphorical hangovers about what happened in Georgia, seething with anger about what they have um, wrought by enabling Donald Trump, losing the White House, losing the House in 2018, and losing the Senate majority. Uh, they knew that going into today, and, and it was just an incredible weight that it dawned on this day when they were focused on the objections of Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz, but not so much on what the president had stoked with all of these fellow travelers that he brought to Washington, promising a wild day unquote, in a recent tweet, um, and um, fomenting violence in tweets last night, tagging Senator Cornyn, Senator Thune, and Senator Mitch McConnell, and threatening Vice President Trump, I mean, President, Vice President Pence. All of this was foreseeable, all of it. So they started the day thinking, boy, this person has ruined the Republican Party for us, and, uh, and then we saw this tragedy unfold. Um, it, at the Capitol today. Uh, I don't know what the sort of reckoning and the coming of Jesus uh, will be in, in the days to come. Uh, who will uh, lick their wounds and say they're sorry? It was interesting to see Lindsey Graham tonight. Um, it's interesting to see some of people, you know, like Senator Toomey, actually saying that the president is a demagogue. All of the military leaders coming out and being very explicit. But again, all of this was predictable. Uh, someone who worked for the president uh, told me two years ago in 2018, of course, he will not leave um, nicely. He will not concede. He will say that any election is rigged that he loses, and he will call on his supporters to come to Washington with their guns. What my colleague Philip uh, Wegman at the Real, at Real Clear Politics learned tonight was that. Uh, Vice President Pence's chief of staff, Mark Short, is now forbidden to go back to his office at the White House by Donald Trump. Um, what that Rudy Giuliani report in the dispatch shows is that the president was excited by what happened today and was hoping he could continue to slow things down because everyone had burst into the Capitol in an act of insurrection. We have to worry uh, very much about the hours and days to come. There, there is just no way that he will not try something new. Uh, the Rudy Giuliani story that AB refers to, uh, Rudy is dialing around to Trump friends in the U.S. Senate, asking them for more time, drag out this process, please. We know that because he sent a call to the voicemail of the wrong senator who promptly shared it uh, with the news media. So it's all on the web tonight. You can hear what Rudy sounds like dialing for dollars. A.B., a final question. Tell me how this works. Um, look, there, there are some members of the U.S. Senate who are dumb as a bag of hair. That's always been true for the history of the body. Uh, Ted Cruz, Princeton, Harvard Law, uh, not dumb. Josh Hawley, Stanford, Yale Law, taught at Oxford, clerk for the Chief Justice of the United States, not dumb. A at least, again, learned book smarts. Yeah, how does this work? Do both of these guys show up in 2024 expecting a baked-in base and, and saying to the Republican base, hey, I'm your guy, remember me? I objected uh, to the awarding of the election to Joe Biden, which started that whole paroxysm of violence back on 6 January 2021. Oh, I absolutely believe that they could not let go 
that their personal ambition really drove them after a, a big talking to by Senator McConnell uh, and many others after this tragedy unfolded today, they seriously <clears throat> continued to put uh, their ambition before their country and their party. Uh, and um, I, I, you know, Josh Hawley will be forever shamed on this day, not only for his objection to the certification of the Electoral College count, but for his use of irregardless despite his um, Ivy pedigree, that is not an actual word. Uh, but Don, uh, Ted Cruz is a scoundrel, and um, he has been peddling falsehoods to his voters for years, like when he shut the government down, telling people who were supposed to donate to his website that they could stop Obamacare if they simply refused to fund it when he knew Republicans didn't have the vote. So um, I don't think that they have very good prospects in the 2024 field. I think that Donald Trump um, and the people who are sort of sucking up to him now won't be faring very well, uh, but I could be wrong. But um, I, it, it is interesting to see tonight more than half of House Republicans, Brian, still wouldn't back down, uh, and neither would uh, Cruz and Holly, and they believe that they are relieving some righteous band of, of um, voters that um, are not going to let go of all the disinformation they've been hoovering from Donald Trump, um, and they're going to continue to look for fighters. And it's really... Did the party long ago let go, as we've discussed, of any kind of sense of governance, governance, party principle, or policy agenda? It's all about tactics uh, and grievance and cultural war. And um, that is apparent and manifest on the Senate floor um, with both of them pushing this. If they push for more states, it'll really be uh, beyond overboard. But just what they've done is incredibly damaging. Amy Stoddard, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. It's been uh, it's been a day. I'll say that uh, we. Uh